Hello everybody. Hi. Welcome to our YouTube channel once again. So this week we've been asked some questions by our lovely members of our Facebook group, Team Topsy. Go join it. So, let's begin. Who have we got? So the first question is from Rebecca and she has asked, what is our favourite films? Or are our favourite films? Never really been a film person, but I do love... Don't laugh at me. Garfield. I cry laughing watching Garfield. Like, it is a good film yeah, though, mate. I like Moana. I love Moana. I love Tangled. I love Tangled. I love Maleficent. And then actually, I watched a really good film the other night. Everyone would probably think it's not a very good film, but it was, was it Perfect Storm? It was really exciting. What What's about that about? Um, it's George Clooney yeah, in it. He's on a ship. I remember he's on, that. He's on a boat. That was from like quite a long time ago, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was on late the other night and Stuart had it on. Oh, did he? <laughs> he did, did he did. Perfect Storm. Hi. Hey, up. Yeah, what's yours? Um, I mean, I've got loads, obviously, as you saw. No, I, I love Frozen. I love Beauty and the Beast. I love Lilo and Stitch. Mm. I, lo I love I love films. Well, you know I love films, but but I like anything me apart from anything overly girly. You don't like rom coms, do you? I don't mind if they're funny. What I can't be asked with is things like P.S. I love Stop you. That to me isn't a rom com. PSI. That's just a romantic drama. It's wonderful. I, ain't got someone, time for I hope that. Stuart does that for me. When he goes, leaves me notes everywhere. I think he's gonna go first. Yeah. I can <laughs> I can assure you he'll be going first, guys. Nah, because I won't want them reminders, me. Yeah, but it's nice. It's not for me. Okay. If they've gone, I'd be like, I'd be too upset to have like little reminders. I know, everywhere. but it's almost like, oh, they thought of me. They thought I'd like that. I don't mind them when they're like funny, like romantic comedies. Yeah, yeah. Because they're funny, aren't they? Like I love like Mean Girls. I know it's not really a romantic comedy, but, <laughs> but I suppose I don't know, is it? I don't. I don't know what category know. would come under. But I like like. I like funny things. I just don't like them when there's not really a story and it's just no. about like love. Soppy. You don't like soppy, do you? No. Do you like it though? I love it. Oh yeah, that's I love that, that, that's, that's a big and one. And saw. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love saw. So yeah, so the next question, again from Rebecca, is what would be your ideal day trip? Or what would be yours? Um I would love it to involve animals of some description, oh, whether yeah. it be like the zoo, a farm, or eat, like, I love anything to do with water, so like going anywhere where there's a stream, a little river, canals, the seaside, so that, that kind of brings in my animals as well, I could find little crabs, oh, little yeah. fish, yeah, I like stuff like that, as long as there's snacks, snacks and animals. Yeah, you can't go wrong. You cannot. Go I wrong. love like going to like Nose the Savoir Park, but then mm -hmm. I I like I like just going on an adventure. So you yeah, know, just, just like, like get in the car and just drive somewhere. No, no, I mean like on foot. Oh, okay. I mean like I'm just lazy. I like adventures in the car. I mean like you know like I go up to like the country park and in the yeah hills yeah and all go, that and and go walk somewhere new. Yeah, and, discover and then I get somewhere. dead excited because I go on my own with my dog. And I take loads of sick pictures. And I get a full rundown. And I, I give her a full rundown. Because obviously, because in that situation, you can't really do things like that. very far. Um, so I like to just keep her, keep her, you know. And then sometimes I'll go and suss out bits and say to Nat, like... We could go, like the big we flat could go, bit that I, I can, can drive walk. to this bit and we can go in yeah. this bit. And Which then, we've done with the dogs. Yeah, we've done it before, mm. haven't we? Um, but that's probably my thing, mm. is like... I just like going on adventures. We but just then... like we both like quite simple things. I think. Yeah, we're not we're not hard to please. No, like, I can't get to... excited and over it, anything. And do you know what? I like days out that not that I'm tight, but I like days out that don't cost any money. Like I can yeah. just go and find something to entertain myself. Yeah, not like the dog cafe. Not like the dog. I mean, but I'm I do down for the, the dog, dog cafe, cafe, guys. But it costs money, obviously, doesn't it? So. And it ends up quite expensive. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't think that would be my perfect day. Would yeah. that be yours? Day out, like my perfect day in would just be snacks, a duvet, the dog and the film. Yeah, but day out. But if I had to go Then I like out, a theme park as well. Yeah. I like that fun, yeah. like I love a good theme park. I love a roller coaster. Mm. 
A big dipper. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy a big dipper. <laughs> I believe so. I enjoy I enjoy the big one, but I don't fit on that anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much like yeah, the perfect day, I would say, for a day out. But if you ask me my perfect day, it would probably be curled up with my dog. So with like a, an endless supply of double cheeseburgers. And, and cheese. And cheese. Mm. Yeah. Just, I mean, it sounds great. What more do you need? Okay, so we've now got Josephine Bastian. Josephine said, the body positive part of your empire. Hey, I like that word, em empire. empire. Was it always planned when you set out to do the clothing range? That's for Joe to answer, I think. To be honest, it wasn't. I wasn't actually body positive. When Topsy first started, like, I wouldn't even wear midi dresses or anything. It was seeing so many different bodies coming into the store and how good they looked and everything that made me like say, right, okay, you know, I can look good in that because mm. she's a similar size to me and she looked good in it. So I, I reckon I can look good in that. So it was just like training my brain to stop looking in the mirror and see those like imperfections that's yeah but, but i've said like we have a lot of people saying oh it's thanks to topsy curvy thanks to you guys that i now feel differently and i often say no like but you help us like we have down days and then sometimes seeing someone's post in the group looking amazing in something that i was probably thinking i couldn't wear it helps us it helps us be positive about ourselves it's you know we're all together we're not at, like at the end of the day nobody loves their own body nobody i don't care what you say even if you're a size six a size eight you might look at somebody else's body and think yeah they're perfect but nobody loves their body so just to make things clear nobody loves their body nobody loves their body they don't and you might be at peace with your body or you might be able to find bits of your body that you find attractive but no nobody i don't think looks in the mirror and says oh yeah, yeah. But we all just focus on imperfections yeah. you know, like when you look at your face in a mirror and you've got a spot like i've got a spot here right now and it's all i can see can you see it and that's that right same. next to you yeah. <laughs> I didn't but that's, know there was a but spot that's there. the that's the same like yeah. with people's bingo wings with people's stomachs with stuff like that mm. I think as women, we are very, very self-critical. Yeah, that's like, it. Regardless of size. It's, sadly, it is in us. We, we can't help it. No, no, we are. So, Josephine also asked if we ever considered selling clothes at a festival. That's what kind of festival you mean. I mean we do sell at the Curve Fashion Festival, but it's not, you know, outdoorsy, singy dancey. I don't feel like I could cope. It would stress me out too much with the dirt. Oh, no, I don't mind that. I mean, I've done a festival before. Yeah, but not but selling clothes. Not selling, no. Like, it would be so hard like, yeah, to I keep don't everything. Think, yeah, I don't. You know. And plus, you would have to stay in a tent and you won't. Hell no, I ain't staying in no tent. <laughs> Hell no. Sarah Hopwood has said, did you ever think when you created Topsy Curvy, it would be as big as it's got? Did you? No. No, friend, did didn't. you not at all think it could be something so amazing? No, I genuinely thought it was just a little local shop. And I just wanted to do it just because I wanted to do something fun. And then the next thing I knew, we were like in the body positive industry mm -hmm. and meeting all these amazing, inspiring people. Um, and then it just went from there. And I have learned are. myself, like I didn't start this seven years ago, seven and a half years ago, saying... I'm dead body positive, so I'm no. going to do this. I started this saying, you know, I'm all right with fashion, so I'm just going to start well, selling Well, you did clothes. it because you were tired of not being able to find clothes that you wanted to yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was it. So I just thought, you know what, I'm just doing it myself, me. Like, I'm a bit of like a... I can't, I'm quite impulsive, so I'm just like... So I get a thought in my head, and then I think, oh, I'm just going to go and do it. And I do, I, don't, I try not to overthink yeah. it, and I just go and do it. But luckily, those two worlds go hand in hand the body positivity world and plus size fashion luckily yeah. it worked out for the best they, they go hand in hand and they have both i think sort of helped build topsy curvy into what it is now and obviously social media has helped that but without one i don't think it would be the other or it wouldn't be as successful no no i, I 
it, it, when we first I remember getting to fifteen thousand followers. Mm. And being like, you're like big time. Oh my god! Because when we <laughs> first started, yours it was like when like businesses only just started really advertising on Facebook and that. And uh. Yours clothing had fifteen thousand followers, and I remember looking at them thinking, "I want that. I want it? to be that." So then, when I got fifteen thousand, it was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and then obviously now we're on like nearly two hundred thousand. So like yeah. it kind of, it kind of just really spiraled. Okay, so next the next question. one. Megan, do you view having a preference for a partner to be plus sized as a fat fetish or simply just a sexual preference? I think I think it could go either or. Depends what they're doing. Yeah. Now if they're they're, you know, trying to feed me up and No, I'm, I'm not about that like I'm, No, not really. I'm all for them cooking tea. But, but yeah. But, but not like force bring like, me food, bring me yeah, snacks. Yeah, I'm yeah, all for that. I think I think it yeah it can go both ways. Like obviously my partner is much much smaller than me. He's probably the size of my left leg. <laughs> he is. He is. No, he's, he's not. He's a little munchkin. No, he but is. I wouldn't say like that. That have is... you seen my thigh? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you have this one. Replicate Stuart. Um. My he's obviously with me. I'm plus size clearly. But. He, he never, like, I've never ever hear, heard him, like, fantasise or, or mention any other women that are plus size. I don't think it's a fetish for him. He's just no. attracted to me. To you, yeah. Nor, nor, nor do his previous partners. They're, they've not looked like me. They've been, been very different. Like, I don't think it's something he finds, you know. It's like, it, it just happened to be that it was me that he fell in love with and... Yeah. But but there are people out there that, that do it is a fetish. No, I know I and, and all this like I'm all for like Stuart touching me, but don't like grapple my belly and no, but I think sexualize. The yeah, yeah, there's sexualizing you because you're fat. Yeah. And then there's having sex with you and you're fat. Yeah, no, yeah, they're completely like, they're different, completely yeah, different yeah, yeah. things. Like you don't have to be like it's like I, I, if I was someone says rubber, if someone what? was to say to me, "What's like your ideal body type in a partner?" Then I'm gonna say plus size. Mm. But that's not my be all and end all. No, like there's much more important. It's not the deal stuff. breaker. No, it's exactly. Not. So I think it's like it's actually, actually isn't it? whilst I'm all for like men admiring the plus size body, I, I really. Well, yeah, okay, people admiring the plus size body in a sexual manner. I am really not down for the whole fetish thing. Of, no. No. Like you hear of these ones in America who like the partners like get turned on like when they put on weight. Yeah. And they like they get the scales out like every week and, and, like, and like almost like rubbing their hands together because they're getting bigger no, and bigger. I don't and, bigger. Like that. and 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 I think it's weird and I think it's abusive if you if I'm completely honest. I feel yeah. like they they make these people so so big that they can't leave the house and they fully depend on that person. That's why it is it's well, a yeah, control. It's aspect. control. And and I'm not for being controlled. No. No, no, no. Hell no. Oh hell no. <laughs> no. We don't be controlled. Nuh -uh. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay, so yeah, so I don't think that it's a fat fetish, Megan. I don't think that having a preference for a plus size partner is a fat fetish. No, I just think it's it's like it's just like I don't know. It's one of them, isn't it? I think it's either or. I think it can yeah, go yeah. both ways. It can go both ways. I don't think it's solely. So she's also asked, do you prefer baths or showers? Showers. I do not want to sit in dirty water. No, I don't no. like baths. They frighten me. No, thank you. I don't want to sit there and get clean, and then the water's got stuff in it. And I, do you know what I don't off get? The on my feet. And How do people wash the hair in the bath? You know when you go to these houses yeah. and they don't have an overhead yeah. shower. How how are these people washing the well, hair? Well, I lived in a house once years and years ago when it only had a bath. It didn't have a shower, so I had, fit, I had to have baths. And I used to wash my hair and feel like a mermaid swishing it about in the water. And then when I got out, I would then run the taps and I had a jug and then I would go and obviously rinse it in the bath. But then as I got out of the bath, I would stand with a jug and pour the, the, the 
the clean water oh. out. It was an absolute nightmare. Oh, no, I not can't. Not about, not about that life. That life. No. Get me in a shower and I'm in good, and out, In and out. Yeah, I like a good shower. I do. Not wasting my time, like, sat in there for time. It's a waste of water as well. It's a lot of water. But do you not think a shower is a lot of water? Because a bath, what, you're full and you're done. Whereas, do you not think a shower wastes more? If you're only just showering, if you're washing your hair, possibly. Yeah. But I feel like if you're just jumping in for a quick shower, like, in the morning... No, I don't think it's. I don't think it would fill to the same level as mine. No, no. I might try in the morning. Well, I might try tonight. Yeah. See how far I fill it. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. see, yeah. see what you think. I'll fasten the thing. Fasten, it. fasten it. Fasten, <laughs> put the plug in. I'm gonna fasten the bath, and then see if it fills up. Fasten the bath, see if it fills up. <laughs> right. Okay. We've got loads of questions there. Um. So Kel Lou has asked, "How have your lives changed changed since the birth of Topsy Curvy?" So I'll tell you how my life changed first, and you can say. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, Nat wasn't there for. I've not been there from the beginning. From the from the beginning, um, but 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 Just gagged in on it. My <laughs> life changed simply because all of a sudden, like people would like recognise me, and they'd be like, "Oh, you know, it's like, very odd, isn't it? Yeah, very odd indeed." Um, like you can't do. I mean, to be honest, we can probably. My life changed because it was good that I didn't have anyone in charge of me. You were happier working for yourself. Yeah, because I could make my own decisions um, and not depend on anybody else. But I think for both of us, since since doing like the live videos mm -hmm. and that, and the content that obviously we create. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Because we're now content creators we are guys don't you worry especially on a wednesday oh, we have special wednesday content creation days um and that's literally for you so it's all for you guys um i don't know um we 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 there's not much that we can really like do anymore because like for example we could never be cheated on because find out people will always there's always going to be so many things and that nat's boyfriend Bruh. Do you know what I mean? So it's one of them, isn't it? We could never be cheated on. Good with that one. And, but then neither we could neither do that no, either. No, 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 no. Um, like, everybody kind of knows, like, your business. So we've been walking around yeah. Ikea, we've been walking around Aston, people come over and say, I've seen you in your bra. I've seen you on the internet. And sometimes... And you those girls on the internet. That's yes, what we yes, get. Yes, we are. Yeah. Or, like we've been followed around ikea yeah but like nothing's sacred anymore and also i sometimes i don't feel like i have a life anymore it's not because we're because we essentially it is joe so and sorry me to interrupt you but that brow is darker than that one. Oh well right carry on probably nobody had noticed until you mentioned <laughs> i've it, said though. it now it's done now yeah essentially it is me and joe most of the time but obviously we have joe's dad twice a week now and we have um our lovely kelly twice a week so, you know, things are expanding. But it is me and Joe that is that are working till, you know, 10 p.m. at night, sometimes beyond. And it is hard to have a life sometimes yeah, because is. because we put so much into it, because we, we care so much about it. And we class, you know, our customers and followers as friends. There's a crossover. There's a big crossover. And sometimes it can be very hard to turn off from it. I struggle massively. You struggle massively. I? I'm quite good at turning off. Um, you know, so we will get, we're not saying it's, you know, don't do it. But, you know, if it's a business inquiry or something about your order, direct it to the business page. Because we do get an awful lot of inboxes to our personal profiles. But if there's a problem, it comes to our personal profile. Which, you know, one, well, it's not fair. And we don't mind we don't when it's mind. like a group issue. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah, it's a business yeah. matter, the group and the business are two. Two separate the, entities. The, the group, the, we... Well, for example, sometimes me and Nat, we've got a load of t-shirt orders to do and we end up spending three hours on a day we're supposed to be making t-shirts dealing mm. with an argument in the group. Yeah. And now that's that's really what we're supposed to be doing out of our yeah. out of work. So yeah, so it is, whilst it's bettered our lives, it's definitely bettered mine because I worked for nearly 10 years running a bookies in a not a very nice area of Manchester and you know armed robberies with hammers at my head knives multiple times in in, in... Don't just get to deal with me i would just get this absolute weapon <laughs> um as much as i loved my actual job dealing with all of that being spat at being abused being threatened followed to my car 
gets a bit much and you know a 72 yeah. hour week with being spat at for 72 hours it's not pleasant whilst the money was great no wasn't really having a life outside of work like i'd work till from seven in the morning till ten at night and i wasn't happy and then on my day off i used to go and work with joe because it gave me a bit of happiness and it was Oh, I enjoyed it. No, I did enjoy it. It was no, like I one know. day of the week where I'd be just we like, used to yeah. go and have Caribbean and, and, then stuff. and whatever I earned on that Thursday, then used to spend on my tea <laughs> afterwards. Oh, yeah. And then, but but also, it, it just by leaving the bookies and coming to work with Joe for Topsy, it, it made me just happier in general. It made me be, go easier on myself because I saw people that were like me. So yeah, so whilst our lives haven't changed dramatically, you know, we're not driving Range Rovers and we don't have big fancy houses. People think that we do and we don't. We, we don't. We're just we're very humble with it. We we earn a wage. We're still we're still Joe and Nat. But it has changed our lives. It is massively. Yeah. I don't because I'm gonna get emotional and I don't want to. God, because I'm due on. Please. What's that? How old are you? Five. I can't see you. I can't see you. I'm hiding, mummy. If I can't see them, they yeah, can't see yeah. me. <laughs> it's like kids can't play hide and seek. I'm, I'm ready. Did you once at school? <laughs> what I was that? hiding from the teacher, and I was just like this in the car. Now. You're an idiot. <laughs> She's like, "What are you doing?" What? And I went, "Do you care if I can't see you? You can't see me." Obviously, as you can imagine, I was a bit of a terror at school. A bit. Anyway, so I'm just lively. I used to say I'm just lively. You're naughty, you naughty little boy. I'm not a naughty little boy. She Your is. phone's going. Is it ringing? No, I mean, it was oh, lighting it's just a message. It's okay. It's Cathy. Oh, no, it's not. It must be someone else. Okay. That's three minutes ago. Um, Josephine again. Josephine said, what's your favourite song? What's your favourite song? Anything oh, by Michael Bolton. <laughs> Steel Bars is, is one of my top ones. Um... Soul Provider is just, well, I've got no words for Soul oh, Provider. Oh, Kelly's stood it, sat in. Kelly's like, not oh, go on. I'm all about Michael Bolton. But I like all music, really. But Michael Bolton, yeah. My, anything Michael Bolton. What's my favourite song? Probably Fucker Slowly, or whatever it's called. It's called <laughs> Fucker Gently. <laughs> Moana. Probably a big way, a big way. I love a bit of Moana. Why is Moana so? I do like Frozen songs. Yeah, okay, you going in with serious Michael Bolton. I like Frozen. I like, I like Frozen, <laughs> and I like him. Um, Look at this stuff. Here's an it needs. I like um part of your world. I like <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> yeah, I like. Show yourself. But they don't need you to sing each song. No, but I have to give them a brick, like a little something. <laughs> Do you? Just a little nugget. Yeah, just a little nugget of something. I'm, so, I'm full of nuggets. I'm full. Yeah, I'm so sure. I like I like all that. Do you know what I mean? Disney. Yeah, but if it was serious songs, probably something like Bob Marley or something. Or oh, somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Good choice. You know, you know, I like um, I like that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's good. But I like loads of stuff, guys. Do you know what I really, what song I really like? A <laughs> ringtone. That's honestly one of my favourite songs. Of I all can time. make your bed rock, oh, it's girl. One of my favourite song of all time. Should have been signed that ringtone, shouldn't it? <sighs> Get terrid, mate. Right, okay. So now Kel's asked us another question and she said, What's your favourite slogans on your t shirts? What's fuck your favourite Oh well That is my favourite slogan. Oh right, I thought off. you were just telling me to fuck off. That also. Okay. If what the shirt fits. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am, you're looking you're looking, I'm looking the t shirts. I've got, I've got a pile of them there. There's a lot that I like. One of my favourite ones, actually, and it's really simple. And every time I make it, I do say out loud, I really like this T-shirt. Just to be kind. Yeah, I do. I think it's so simple. It's all right, it's the wind oh, on the door. It's so simple, but but gets a very important message out. But and then I like our new one, Not Slim, Real Shady. I like that. Like I say, I, like, I do like Fuck Off because it gets the message out there. 
I like no one you thinner than me. Yeah, I that's think. iconic. That's like one of our best selling t shirts. I don't know. But then I also like, like it. your weight my weight is none of your sit concern. on my face this is sit her, on my face. her song that i seen her on singing i was literally winding her right up that's the sit on my face song song <laughs> we, when we write down when we have to make the t-shirts they'll be like to no huns to be kind for sit on my face we but did. it's not even called sit on my face it's called my weight is none of your concern unless i'm sitting on your face but my dad loves that one doesn't he yeah this is one of his like, favorites can I have to sit on my face <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's absolutely I love them great all. yes the no hum because i think that's a really important message because it's kind of saying like you know you know you don't you, you just don't, because you're thinner yeah. than me doesn't mean yeah. that you're prettier than me like yeah. it doesn't automatically Thin does not equate beautiful no it doesn't it, it doesn't. does not automatically equate beautiful it doesn't a thin and beautiful Okay, Catherine said, if a famous chef called you and said they'll come and cook your favourite meal, what would that be and which chef would you love to do it? I, do you know who I really like? I know who you're going to say. I really like Did James you? Martin. Yeah. I really like, I like James Martin. Like, he whacks butter and cream in everything. Yeah, and a lot of, lots of cheese. A lot of cheese. Don't He's not shy. Cheese, does He's it? not shy. Watch that wire, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly come crashing then. through to the video it's alright I could see an accident happening it's okay we'll carry on with it um, yeah James Martin I just think he's like normal he's normal he's not pretentious I like him no he is yeah who's mine Gino De Campo I love Gino so much <laughs> he's so cute and he's just so nice he's like, in the hole he just says <laughs> the most funniest things doesn't he I'm just him. all lost in translation. He is funny. I love him. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I love it when he says like a sheet. A sheet. A sheet. <laughs> not, not and a they're sheet. all like laughing. A fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Um, but what would the meal be? My meal would be Gino could make me like what can he make? I bet me? He'd make a belt in lasagna. <laughs> oh, lasagna is literally one of my favourite meals. Make a really good lasagna. I what bet he would, would mate. Would... Bet he would. I don't know, you know what? Remember when we seen him at the yeah, ideal we home yeah. thing? We were dead upset because all I wanted was to meet Gina. We met Rosemary Schrager, she was lovely. She was we met Callum Best, he was lovely. That he was me. Yeah. We met um he didn't hug me, thank the Lord. Such um me. Lauren Slowell and Bowen. Bowen. There was pure of him and the only person who was there who I wanted to meet oh was was Gino De Campo. But we saw him. And then what was that other man who was there off Master Chef? Was it Greg Wallace? Yeah, that that's the fella. Oh, the ball guy. Yeah, yeah, you were there, wasn't it? I don't know what I'd want James Martin to cook me, you know. Pizza. What did he make? What we both buzzed off? What was oh. that? Really cheesy pizza and we both we both watched it yeah. during lockdown. To be honest, I'd eat anything he gave me. And he was like literally just like slathering it with cheese. Slathering it. I'm like, give me all that cheese, James. Like, you know, I'll be your friend. <laughs> um okay so we've got three questions off our lovely friend kathy so number one this is quite a good one how often do you argue hourly i'd say probably 10 minute left <laughs> it's more it's, i always it's say it's more a bick, it's a bicker oh yeah we can be horrible to each other it's a bicker more than a row we never fall out oh we no never, we don't we never, do all that we never have like you know fallings out no it's don't. just bickering yeah, it's bickering, really. bickering but yeah. it's often it, it, it's it's throughout the day, every day. Oh yeah, yeah. I think my dad and Kelly could probably attest. I mean, I'd worry if we didn't. Mm. Yeah, I, think right, I, I would. would think, I always say that if I come into work and Joe is quiet, I know something's wrong. And I'd, and I'd think something was wrong if we didn't bicker as well. It's in I the same would. league. Yeah, I would because like I like to banter with people, me. And and if if I'm. If I'm serious, I'm just like, boring, I'm it? bored, do you Life's know what I mean? Short. I want to wind everyone up. <laughs> so it, But yeah. Jo's very easy to wind up and she bites so quickly. Two, what are your favourite things about each other? What's your favourite thing about me, friend? Kathy, maybe you could pop that down in the comments. What's Kathy's favourite thing about us? But my favourite thing about you is... <laughs> Dunno. <laughs> Because she likes them all. No, I, I can assure you I don't <laughs> like everything about Jo. Volume being one. I've said this before, and, and I don't know how to phrase it. Like, Jo has a very innocent and sort of, not naive, but 
she's too am. trusting okay. yeah there is an element of naivety and i love that side of her i mean it is a downfall sometimes but i, I think it's a nice i do sometimes think it is a very nice and sort of nice sort of trait to have but yeah you but, obviously you're very generous too generous sometimes which can be took advantage of again that goes back to the naivety it's but yeah, you wouldn't, you, wouldn't, just... you wouldn't deliberately upset somebody. I like that side of you. Like no, you I want would... the best for everybody. You Not would... even someone who I hate. Yeah, but I do. I'm, I'm out to get you. I, I, I would, I would never like want to upset anybody. No. But you know what's interesting? My favourite thing about you is that you're the opposite of that. I'm a bitch. And like, so Nat's taught me so much about like valuing myself and not like letting people take advantage of me. And oh, I hate watching that. I hate it. And 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 it's like it, yeah. Because I I am very like yeah yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I am quite soft in that respect. Yeah. Of whereas, I think because I want people to like me. Whereas I don't care. Whereas not genuinely. <laughs> it's like she. She, like you always say you don't you want like, i love I having friends yeah. i love having people in my life like i love my friends dearly and i love the people that are in my life and that i converse with a lot but if someone told me that right you're gonna have to not have any friends now if it's a matter of life and death you're gonna either gonna die and you still well you wouldn't have friends because you'd be dead but like if someone said i can't have friends anymore yeah i'd be sad yeah i'd miss them it wouldn't be the end of my world. I, I love my own space. I love my own company. I don't depend on anyone. I don't depend on, you know, having friends to do things for me. I'm very, very, like, independent and solitary in, in, in that side of things. But you, yeah, thrive, like, you like, thrive. I would never turn. I, I live on the same road as Nat and I have never, ever just turned up at her house. Because I Said know she would Kelly come then on. You turn up at my house and I swear <laughs> I'll wave to you from the window. I'm not opening the door. Because I didn't invite you. I used to think sometimes, you know, that you were quite harsh. But now I've had... I, I know, no, but I'm now coming to... And I like that about you now. Is that... Yeah, it's good, isn't it? You better like it. I, I like that about you now. I like mm -hmm. it that, that I know that you're my friend because you want to be, not because you feel like you have to be. I always say that to you. I am not your friend because someone's telling me to be your friend or mm. because I feel sorry because I don't... You sound so, but I don't care. I don't need friends. I don't. I, I'm very much like my dad in that respect. Yeah, so he yeah. was like this, like get on on my own. So, so if I if I class you as a friend, would be lucky. Would be lucky. Quite lucky, guys. <laughs> um. Okay. The last one of Cathy is: if you could employ any celebrity to work with, who would it be? Any celebrity to work with, to not work Gemma with. Collins. I can't stand her. Hiya. She's watching. Okay. <laughs> mm. Um. Does she mean like if like employing them to do a clothing range with or to model? I think so. Lizzo. Yeah. Yeah. No. Actually, I, I'm aiming I, for the top. I'm aiming for, for the highest person. Because she just embodies everything. Everything we stand for. We stand for. Yeah. No. I yeah. can. That's a really good shout, mate. I don't thanks, think I thanks, can thanks, stop thanks, that. Thanks, mate. Not about that. Michael Bolton, that. Yeah, but 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 for like work wise, we'd get the most out of Lizzo. Now now, if I could have two, obviously I would then bring Michael Bolton in to serenade me whilst I'm schmoozing Lizzo. No, you won't. You oh, won't. I will. Oh, will you watch me? <laughs> oh. Holly said, what advice would you give to people who want to become more body positive and get more body confidence? Join Team, team Topsy. Topsy. as simple oh, as that. Do you know what? You don't even have to join Team Topsy. You can join um, um, Chat with Fat Feminists. You can join oh. Plus Size Chat. Search the hashtag Team Topsy on Instagram. Or don't TikTok. Have, or TikTok. You know, and you will find loads of people that are in the group. If you don't want to join the group, that's absolutely fine. But follow the hashtags Team Topsy, Topsy Curvy. That's why I love topsy curvy not just a size my topsy my tea. topsy tea follow the hashtags and you will find so many accounts that are very very body positive and you'll also see accounts that have gone from one extreme to the other in like you know they've progressed so much on their own journey and it's so lovely to watch so just by following 
you will find the accounts by looking for hashtags i think i think the the best thing for learning to love yourself is seeing bodies that look like yours because as plus size people we've grown up in a world where all we see on the tv all we see on the internet all we see in magazines mm -hmm. is a certain aesthetic yeah. and it's like that that i always say to natalie if i was an alien coming down from space i'd say why is everybody in there the same why is everybody out on the streets different what what's going yeah. on do you know what i mean and the thing is is because we are not shown diversity in people we are shown one certain aesthetic be that the color of your skin be that your body size anything mm. we are shown one aesthetic like it annoys me when i go on to like clothing websites like for like goths for example mm -hmm. and every single person's gothic yeah show show me a, a like a, 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 a you know what i mean like a blonde dad non tattooed yeah, yeah, yeah. girl they're usually girl. the very pale skin full of tattoos black hair you know it's very yeah, yeah. it's very oh then you go on a matchy matchy scene normal saying, mainstream clothing website is normal, but... and everybody's just like a flat like size 16 yeah. who's like do you know what i mean it's not it's not it's not right guys no. We need to see diverse bodies. Right, Julie Sturgeon has given us a few, so we'll pick a few. So we've already had, what would be a perfect day? And I don't think we can answer that. I don't, I'm not <laughs> answering that. We've answered that. Okay, so we'll go for this one. So favourite takeaway. What is your favourite oh, takeaway? God. It's really hard to decide because my favourite food in the world is pizza. But then I, at the same time, absolutely love Chinese. So I would probably pick Chinese because only because I feel like I could make a pizza at home from scratch and be just yeah. as satisfied. I can't really replicate as much no, as you, you can, can do a really good Chinese whatever. You can. It's never the same. It's not got that taste. God knows what they put in it, but I don't care. Mine would be a McDonald's. I don't need to say any more on the subject. Good. So then Helen's asked, I'm going to whip through because yeah. there's some really nice ones at the end here. Are you happy just being online only or do you plan to open a shop in the future? We've had a shop mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have the time to do that now. It is something that we'd love to do we in the would. future. We would. We would love to be um, worldwide and, you know. But the problem well, is, is we can't branches. replicate us in every single store. And I think the thing that is our USP is the fact that it's, it's us. us. Because that's not me being no no it's anything, not but, but i do it, think it is it me is, it is it's and a, a massive lot... selling point because we're relatable yeah we're down to earth people you know feel comfortable to speak to us about stuff and you know we're not going to get that if we had loads of stores so karen's asked us but i think we're going to talk about this on the live okay just us about how we feel about Shein. Okay, well, well, yeah, that that could be a long one. Yeah, because it's talking about have they stolen any of your slogans? Probably. No, they have. Well, mm. I asked you about that mama bear oh, yeah, the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. The end of the day, they've also got like a a, a dog a dog mama one as well, and yeah. I'm just the end of the day you're paying for the what you get what you what's this what what am I trying to say? You get what you pay for. Yeah, it's about quality sometimes. And they're literally about two quid cheaper than ours these yeah. days. Mm. So. Oh, yeah, they they're not have, as cheap as they used to be. No, they have they have stolen our things before. Yeah. But the way we see it is, Boo do it. Everybody does it. It's, Every it's single sadly. clothing company steals ideas from other clothing yeah. companies. There is no two ways about it. No. Where Mark Jacobs will go on the catwalk with a dress, and the next thing it's in Primark in three weeks in a cheaper Primark version. Rip, rip off. It's like Gucci. And... But we will we will do more of a, you know, more of a discussion about that. Okay, so the next one off, Charlie. Why are you so beautiful? Is that to you or to me or to both? I think it's maybe to both of us. Because my mama gave it me. Just look here. But no, I don't look in the mirror and think, hey, you're beautiful. I, I don't. No, I, I don't. Me. I don't. I don't. But then I can see the beauty in others. Like, oh, so yeah, much definitely. more yeah. than the beauty in myself. Um, Mandy, so we'll finish on this one. Um, Mandy Fisher is in fact it, we'll just do a little plug here um, our friend dancing. Mandy we've, we've done a TikTok today she's just released her first single on iTunes she's number one in, is in it? the Finnish iTunes charts no, dance charts number one but 
go and download her song now from iTunes. It's the song, I'm so excited. It's Mint. We're going to be putting a TikTok on later to us doing her dance for it. We've duetted um, her dance. So we are so excited. So Mandy said, do you realise how... Stop it. Shall I read it? No, I'm reading it. <laughs> you got it together. So good job this yeah. last one, guys. Do you realise how many lives you have changed with your clothing and positive posts? Fuck it up. Because I bet it's a lot. A lot of people love your energy and positivity, including me. Aww. You are amazing. Thank you. Like, thanks. I don't think we do realise. No, no. We just we, we do, live in our lives. We, right? we just do what we do, and you know, we do sometimes get messages saying, you know, thank you, you saved my life, and and messages very similar to that. That's all we ever want is to make people feel good because we all deserve yeah. to feel good and we, we know how it feels to, to be like at rock bottom with with, with like for goodness <laughs> sake get it together <laughs> god it's like a little water so drink this is the last, one. last question thank god no we, we we are aware of of the effects we have had or not necessarily we team topsy topsy curvy in general has had on a lot of people it's had a massive effect on me but it was never meant to go no, but, i'm glad but, it has yeah yeah you're super glad i'm i'm over the moon that that people look at themselves totally different like and i always say i wish i had things like this for me growing up and just think of all those girls who are like 14 15 16 who are pitting their bodies against like the likes of, at of like, love island and all of that and then they're able to go on TikTok and just see our, our Instagram, our Facebook and just be exposed yeah. to this amazing world that we, we so didn't much have more, growing up. We are so much more visible now on every platform. We are not being hidden away. We, we, we have big bodies and even bigger voices and I, we, won't, we won't ever be hidden. And, and, and that is what we're trying to work on for everybody to, to feel that way. Go Team Topsy! Thank you so much, guys, for your amazing questions. And by all means, do you, you keep them coming. You cried into one of your chins. Goodness me. Is it chins? It's down here somewhere. Oh, God, everybody. Oh, God. Cried into your chin. I just, it just makes me so emotional, like, because I know what it feels like to feel horrible about yourself. Yeah. yeah. And to find people who are in front of you who look like you and who have a body like yours and it means you can start to accept yeah. your own body so thank you so thank much you. for all your amazing comments um we have been as you can see we're in our tiktok famous t-shirt make sure you follow us we're at topsy curvy we have been doing tiktoks today so go and give there's been a lot of dancing there's been a lot of dancing they're not on yet we're going to be trickling them out over the next few days um but please do what you know them i just want to say you know the mandy song what's the the it's featuring her but what's the main person called something madison let me have Maison. a look Somebody. i've got it on my i've downloaded something it on Maison. my itunes oh, Christ, one i can't remember right here it is marcus mason feet mandy fisher so go and download it marcus mason featuring mandy fisher mandy with an eye let's go and try and get this to number one in the uk so good um because that'd be so exciting wouldn't it guys so that's it for today that's it guys yeah. the next video you will see i will not look like this anymore Stay are tuned. you gonna do it before that probably yeah and i probably won't have orange roots anymore but maybe I will. I'm giving up with this. Who knows? Peace. Bye, guys. Bye.